Now this is the second part. Misconduct of negligence. This is the second video. I hope you all have seen the earlier one. This is a sequel to the first one. Okay, so let's start. I've already explained you as to what is negligence in the earlier video. In the last video, I had promised you there are some examples which we need to discuss. So, for example, a healthcare professional giving a patient a medication that they are allergic to. Just think of a situation, you go into your dispensary and your company doctor administers you a medicine to which you are allergic to. He gives you a teramycin injection instead of a penicillin one and there is a huge reaction. You are on the verge of that. You fight a battle and then God is great, you are saved. But then you say, what about that person? He was negligent. So, what about the teaching a teacher who leaves a class unsupervised resulting in the child getting hurt? So many examples. We have heard of examples that in a NCC training, the teacher was negligent. He fired the shot and it brushed the skull of a student. The student was in coma. He was in hospital for three years and he was a growing child. Can you understand the plight of his parents? That is negligence. Say a car driver injuring someone in an accident that has occurred while the car was say put, put on a reverse. You have to see everywhere, mirrors are there, then the car driver is negligent. This has resulted in fatal deaths also. These are all instances, friends, of negligence. And moreover, friends, negligence differs from case to case. Test of negligence varies with nature of employment and responsibility. The same yardstick, the same positive index which you apply to one person, the same parameter for one person may not be with the other person. His job may be different, responsibilities may be different. And sometimes there is an isolated instance. Gross negligence, misconduct is an act of behavior. It's a, it's, it's a behavior which is sufficiently serious to lead to dismissal of that workman. That is a gross negligence. It is so serious, only one instance but cannot be pardoned. There was a worker who had put in 36 years of unblemished service. He was given a prize, he was given those accolades which workmen are given best worker award and he was to retire and just committed one misconduct. The point is, how do you look at him? Whether you should be very soft and say, okay, it's only one misconduct, let him go. Or we have to see the quality of the misconduct and not the quantity. And here we see some more examples. And say for example, an error which is the which has the consequence leading to serious or atrocious consequences can be styled as negligence. The consequence is so serious that you cannot think of a pardon as far as this person is concerned. Now, the, in a conduct, you see many a times the culpability is very high. In gross negligence, the culpability is very high. The criminal element is also there. You have to understand. Otherwise, everybody, any criminal offender will say that, well, it happened out of a mistake. And you are all aware that to fix up criminality, criminality, the mens rea, mens rea means the guilty mind is to be seen. This test is, of course, we are just dealing with misconducts under the standing orders. And then in a conduct where there is a marked departure from the standards, substantially worse than that of a reasonable man. You see, how would a reasonable man behave in a situation? And there is a deviation from the sub, uh, substantial deviation, not one or two degrees. How could you do it? Would be, some people are awestruck. Some are flabbergasted. Not only surprised, some are shocked. How could you do such a thing? Well, you are in charge of the full plant. And then the electrical installations for it are by, by, with you. And you just press the on button. Being unmindful of the fact as to what repercussions it is going to have. On all electrical appliances in the shop floor. How can you do it? This would be gross negligence. Carelessness seek is often productive of more harm as I told you. And also of uh, deliberate uh, wickedness or malevolence. Carelessness, I mean, it's the most easiest word. I'm sorry, I, I was a bit uh, careless. No, that's not the point. Now, we see some examples. What about, I mean, the examples are given by nobody else but our courts. 
Say a workman who is put in 36 years of unblemished service, only one misconduct, what is to be done? That's the point. What about the sentry who sleeps at a post and lets the enemy to slip in? The sentry sleeps and a few terrorists enter in India, only one misconduct, what is to be done? What about the compositor who instead of putting a plus sign puts a minus sign in the question papers and causes thousands of examiners to fail? Only one misconduct. What is to be done? What about the airman, the man at the airport who puts a, a wrong mixture of petrol in the aeroplane? The octane value, friends, of that petrol, the petrol which is put in aeroplanes is different. The man at the airport who puts a wrong mixture of petrol in the aeroplane and causes it to crash. So many people die. Only one misconduct, what is to be done? Then you have the famous example of the compounder who puts a wrong mixture of medicine in the eyes of patients and turns them blind. Friends, all of these examples are real and they have happened in India. Everywhere. We speak and see negligence. The railway employee who does not set the point and causes two trains to collide, 350 passengers die. But he is put in 36 years of unblemished service. He is one accolades, he is a good worker and only one misconduct. In all such cases, friends, the Honorable Supreme Court is clear that we have to see the, quant the quality of the misconduct and not the quantity. What about that person who is smoking where the aircraft is being refueled? Doesn't he understand that this is an area and petrol is very inflammable? He's smoking there. What a negligence. What about the worker in a galvanizing industry? In a galvanizing industry, the pipes are to be soaked and dipped in a concentrated acid bath. And the pipes were not tied properly and they fell from a height of almost 20-30 meters into a tank which contained concentrated acid whether it's hydrochloric acid or sulfuric acid concentrated acid if it splashes it just fell, falls on some worker he will almost burn to death this is negligence so what should be the punishment in all such cases dismissal is the only answer what about uh, say the person who makes the balance sheets without checking and then there are no rechecks and then the passing the parcel or passing the buck arises. Well, I did it, but he is, it was his duty to recheck it. He did not do it. Sometimes in India, passing the parcel is a very famous pastime. We all indulge into. And no person is a failure till you blame somebody for it. So the blame is to be pinned on somebody else. Otherwise, I am the most perfect person is what is the defense of every workman. And then, uh, the, say for example, the, at, a, at a railway gate which is manned, the defense sometimes is the driver of the train is not guilty of criminal negligence because of the accident. He says the person who is to man the gate he did not man it properly. So they, again, whether it's contributory negligence, this will all friends differ from time, place and circumstance. Uh, remember. Now, in an accident where the test is the accident could have been averted by the driver taking care. And here this also mixes with the doctrine which I told you in the earlier slide, that is the doctrine of foreseeability. How much can he foresee? Whether the accident could have been averted, it could have been seen or it could have been in the contemplation of a reasonable man or an average prudent man. And if it was to be averted, why did the accident happen? Are all the questions we are going to answer. Then there it, it's max of negligence. Then friends, sometimes a single act may also be uh, enough to declare a workman negligent. And then the punishment, punishment ranges from warning to dismissal depending as to what is the negligence. And then there are some defenses. See, misplaced sympathy can be a great evil. Everybody should be sympathetic, he should be empathetic also. But misplaced sympathy is a big evil. And the defense is, defense is RC. There are some good defenses also. This major, this major means act of God. I was doing this work, but then there was a tempest, there was an avalanche, there was a snowfall, there was an earthquake, there was a flood, there was 
brain fall and that's why if these are all acts of God and there are so many cases also of course I mean we cannot sum up all the cases of negligence in a video but then G.I.G. Rao quote cotton mills versus Kishori Lal wherein 3000 meters of cloth was damaged and ultimately the high court had that yes that is negligence 3000 meters of cloth it requires money to manufacture the cloth there is a value to add it to it there is a price to it and just because of somebody's negligence 3000 meters of cloth going in the waste paper basket that certainly is negligence then in state of Rajasthan versus Srimati Lassi here the, there was an official who was appointed to defend the, the state government and the official did not do his duty properly and did not defend the state government properly and it was held that the official not defending the state government um, properly was a, was a species of negligence Yes, if you are appointed to, to do a certain job, you have to do it with precision, fineness. The finish should be there. That yes, at least it should not smack of negligence. And lastly, Indian Iron and Steel Com Company versus uh, Bhabrish Datta. This is a case wherein a watchman was not guarding the assets. What's the duty of a watchman? To watch something. And he is not guarding the assets. He was warned many times. How many? 13 warnings. Then he was suspended also and his past record was as hopeless as possible. And yet he did not improve. Ultimately the finding of the court was that he is negligent. Okay. And as I told you, the punishment for negligent ranges from warning till dismissal. The spectrum which is deployed is all huge. And it of course depends from circumstance, time, place. What is the case, particular case, everything will have to be seen. So friends, this was all what we discussed on negligence in the past video as well as this video. I gave you so many examples and in our journey of imparting knowledge, it's time for me to bid you a goodbye and we meet in the next video. Thank you so much.